Hello everyone, my name is Sandra Trevino, pronouns are she and they. I'm an artist, activist, and lifelong resident of Brownsville, Texas. First of all, I want to wish Brownsville a very happy 170th birthday. All right, let's go. And for a gift this year, I would love to see Mayor Trey Mendez investigated for his abuse of power against local resident and activist Rebecca Hinojosa. It's disappointing to see how many of our local officials have become spaced out sellouts, continuing to support the destruction that SpaceX has brought and continues to bring to Boca Chica, Brownsville, and the Rio Grande Valley as a whole. You all idolize this narcissist billionaire Elon Musk and his unethical business practices. And when we the people mention this behavior, you all are so quick to present yourselves as victims instead of listening to our concerns. For example, our tremendously ridiculous excuse for a mayor has had the audacity to announce he is not seeking re-election because of the quote, heavy toll on his physical, mental, and financial health that few can relate to. Let's turn our attention to the toll he has taken on Rebecca Hinojosa. Last February, he attacked Rebecca, accusing her of allegedly spray painting graffiti over his $10,000 shrine to a soulless Brownsville future. And he made sure everyone knew that his allegation was based in his opposition to the incredible work she has done as an advocate for our environment and against corporate greed. He had police officers invade her home and take her for investigation. She had no time to get dressed. She had her prescription glasses taken away from her and she was held for 26 hours. He posted her a mugshot and shared her employment history on his official campaign Facebook page to ruin her chances of returning to work and making a living. Mendes presented Becca as public enemy number one, targeting her in a way he has never targeted anyone else online because he wanted to send everyone a message. If you disagree with him, if you even think about shattering the illusion he is trying so hard to push, this lie that Brownsville is okay with adopting some bland corporate image over our rich cultural history, he will do whatever he can to silence you. And then he'll post about you on social media to make himself look good. Now, I wasn't able to find a green shirt for the occasion, but rest assured, I'm here to support Becca. And as you can see, I'm not the only one here to support this amazing person and accomplished activist. Becca cares deeply about our environment and the safety of those who live here. Many of the people you see today, many of the people who might go up to speak, have had the opportunity to connect with her, to work alongside her, and to learn from her. While our local officials are taking selfies with rockets and Teslas and business people who are looking to make a quick buck by exploiting our area, Becca has earned the love and support of a community. And we will always show up to speak against injustices committed against a fellow resident. Rebecca Hinojosa should not be punished to satisfy this man's ego. The charges filed against Rebecca Hinojosa must be dropped. And Trey Menso, I mean, Trey Mendez should be investigated for his Hi, abuse of power. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Nancy Guevara, and I've been working here in Brownsville for about seven years. I've been working actively in the community as an artist and an activist, and I've known Becca Hinojosa since I moved here. In these last seven years, I've worked to create more community arts infrastructure and programming in Brownsville. I have received national support from the National Endowment for the Arts, Art Place America, A Blade of Grass, NALAC, and the Ford Foundation, and the New York Foundation for the Arts. Since I think sometimes local officials try to kind of discredit us, right? I'm an educated woman from a low-income Mexican immigrant household that went to UT Austin, Harvard, and is a Fulbright scholar. So my voice should count. And I, I need my voice to count here. I know Becca Hinojosa for seven years. I know that she works tirelessly. I know because I've worked alongside her. And all she's trying to do is protect the environment, protect our environment, make sure that our water stays clean, make sure that our air stays, stays clean. We're working tirelessly to defend the rights of this community, of this immigrant community. You need to hear our voices, you do. You need to hear them. 
These are educated people speaking out every day, trying to protect our environment. We are scared of losing Boca Chica. We are already losing Boca Chica. Think of all the history, all the years, all the families that have memories there. SpaceX is not economic progress, it's not. I'm telling you, I'm an educated citizen here. I've grown up in on the border, on the Texas border, and I'm going to continue along with Becca to fight for the Texas border. It's not progress. It's not. We need to start defending low-income people, not corporations like SpaceX and LNG. That's not progress. The loss of our biodiversity and wildlife means the worst quality of life for all of us. I support Becca. She is fighting for what is right. I demand the city of Brownsville to drop the charge against Becca Hinojosa and to investigate Mayor Mendez. There has been an abuse of power here. There has been. And we're tired. And we're going to keep fighting. Thank you we're very much for your fighting. comments. Next, we have Jose Jimenez. In the Communist Manifesto, Marx and Engels accurately describe the modern state under capitalism as nothing but an executive committee which handles the affairs of the whole bourgeoisie. That means that the state or the ruling body of government using the police, the courts, and other institutions under its belt, such as school, media, um, and other NGOs, represses or oppresses the workers, the homeless, or mitigates friction and dissonance between the people suffering and the exploitation on behalf of the capitalist bosses and landlords. Nothing proves this more than the hostile arrest of Becca Hinojosa and the subs subsequent humiliation inflicted on her by the mayor in February of last year. We all know the story by now. $20,000 mural was uh, defaced. The city, mayor, police, and surrounding local capitalists blamed Becca for the act due to utilization of her First Amendment rights in the past, i.e. her activism and her community work. Whether Mendez did in fact personally request her arrest or not, the fact of the matter remains. Four officers showed up at Becca's apartment early in the morning while she still had her PJs on, failing to show a warrant and unethically barging in her door, forcing her to the police station with no shoes on and without her seeing glasses, and off for a Class B misdemeanor, a graffiti tag, a mere act of vandalization for which evidence alleging her has yet to be submitted by them. As mentioned in ThroughChargeV.com, uh, in an article in last year, the mayor is setting precedents with this act of aggression and intimidation. But mayor, we're already intimidated. We're intimidated by the rising cost of goods and housing, by the threat of homelessness, by the threat of starvation, by the threat of sickness and disease. We're threatened by the threat of, we're intimidated by the threat of the ongoing border militarization, and now by our very own local commission and police. How are we supposed to believe that our government's words, liberty, justice, and equality for all, when indeed the opposite is true? Your petty attempts at intimidation only adds fuel to the struggle, one you're on the losing side of. The people voted for y'all, but since money equals people now, and it's pretty self-explanatory who you serve, that and the fact all of you on the commission are either petite bourgeois and or landlords, you have to keep your class interests aligned and with the same money that put you up there. Under the hypocritical conditions of bourgeois liberal democracy, we cannot trust those in power to hold themselves accountable. That's why we, the people of Brownsville, demand an investigation into the mayor's abuse of power, the police's compliance and brutality, and the silent but rich minority of capitalists and landlords involved in the matter. In addition, we demand it not be another city or county department, nor the Texas Rangers, but an independent and impartial committee of residents and workers be organized to assess the matter. However, most importantly though, we ask that you, in unison with the district attorney, dismiss the charges brought against Becca and offer reparations for the abuse and assault she endured. It's been a year since the alleged tagging and nothing of material or grand substance has occurred, has it, Mayor? Was your doxing meant to warn others, uh, leading to a waste of municipal resources and tax dollars, or is it to stroke your overinflated but fragile eagle? Or was it for Daddy Musk? Rebecca. 
Hi there, my name is Emma Guevara and I'm a lifelong resident of Bronzeville, Texas. I'm also one of Mayor Mendez's neighbors, so we're not all from out of town. I'm here today to address the commission about the silencing of activists and the infringements on freedom of speech by the mayor, the local police, and in a larger sense, the conspiracy orchestrated by these entities to harass and bully at will. On February 16th, 2022, local environmental activist, Brownsville community member, and my fellow colleague and friend, Becca Hinojosa, was violently arrested by the Brownsville Police Department for allegedly defacing a mural. This mural was commissioned by the city of Brownsville using money that came from a donation from the Musk Foundation, a charity nonprofit owned by Elon Musk. The bottom portion of the mural was defaced with the phrase gentrified stop SpaceX and was promptly covered up by the next morning. A quick fix that was not awarded to other defaced art in the city, such as the Bloom Where You Are Planted mural, painted by local artist Josue Ramirez, or the George Floyd mural that was painted on, at the old graffiti park even after it was defaced multiple times during the Black Lives Matter movement of 2020. To make it even clearer that loyalty lies with money and not with people, our own mayor responded to this incredibly inappropriate and unjust arrest with a similarly incredibly inappropriate and triumphant public Facebook post that proceeded to dox Becca's full government name, mugshot, and workplace title that he found on LinkedIn. It's interesting that this alleged crime Mayor Mendes chose to post about on his own Facebook was a Class B misdemeanor, which is frankly debatable because I can't see how a few swipes of Pepto-Bismol pink can cost over $100. But on January 28th of the same year, Daniel Molstad, a former Brownsville Children's Museum employee, was arrested for possessing and distributing child sexual assault material. And Mayor Mendes did not make a post about it until after he posted about Becca while Daniel Molstad was out on bail. You could argue that he was waiting until he was proven guilty, but why would he give a child predator that respect instead of a community activist? Or perhaps because Daniel is the Midi Foundation's executive director's son, and the mayor doesn't want to ruffle any feathers with the local ruling class. The conspiracy theory that the police in chief at the behest of the mayor collaborated to have Becca arrested for such a petty crime is seeming more like a conspiracy fact. Becca has been a strong and outspoken voice against the destructive impact SpaceX has had on our environment and city as a whole. And of course, those at the top who reap the most benefits would be SpaceX's most ardent supporters. But Becca makes sure to keep the voices of those who are the most directly impacted at the forefront, supporting community members across the lower Rio Grande Valley, centering work done by the Carrizo Come Crudo tribe of Texas, the original people of this land, and always making sure to advocate first and foremost for the people who live here. Today, you've received a petition signed by over 1,700 people who are all in agreement that Becca's charges should be dropped and Mayor Mendes should be investigated. We implore you all to write a letter to District Attorney Luis V. Sainz to drop Becca's charges, investigate Mayor Mendes, and do what you were elected for and listen to the people. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Sarah Stapleton Barrera, and I am Ms. Becca Hinojosa's criminal defense attorney. Uh, and I'm here in that capacity, but I'm also here in the capacity as an ally, okay? Um, and as you know, Becca here has been charged with this Class B misdemeanor, uh, the city of Brownsville being the complainant on that paperwork. And we're here to ask that instead of pushing for prosecution of your constituents, you work with and instead of ignoring your constituents, you listen to them and try to find some sort of common ground because we know that there is somewhere if we try. And we ask, instead of embarrassing on social media, uh, we try to empower and give people a voice. That's the kind of Brownsville that we all deserve. But that's not quite what we have right now. We have this environment where people are frustrated and people are, are lashing out because they're just not feeling heard. Now, as for the arrest of Ms. Becca Hinojosa, we are confident that the evidence is just simply not there to convict this little young lady. It's not there. Um, for strategic trial reasons, I won't go into details. But I will say this, um, there are aspects of the investigation that are highly problematic. And we would urge that when these are brought to light, which they will be if we proceed,
proceed to jury trial and we will if this is not dropped because I guarantee you that Miss Becca Hinojosa is not pleading guilty to anything. And what these things that these problematic issues that will be brought to light, what they will do is they will bring shame upon our city. They will bring shame upon our commission. They will bring shame upon BPD and they will bring shame upon the district attorney's office. Now, you know, on this issue of shame, this this idea of the social media shaming and posting people's mugshots on the internet, right? States all over the US are enacting laws that prohibit specifically this. Lawmakers saying that the purpose of this is not to um, there's no public safety purpose behind this. It doesn't help anybody. All it does is shame. And it stigmatizes the person that's been arrested, whether it's valid or not. You've got coerced photos, often at a moment of crisis, embarrassment and despair. And this affixes guilt to a person before they've even gone through the, the due process. So I'd urge us at this point to have a little class and, and, and stop with it. You single-handedly have the power to stop this prosecution. All you got to do is pick up those phones. I'd urge you to do the right thing. Hello, my name is Rebecca Hinojosa. I'm a resident of Brownsville, multi-generational from the Rio Grande Valley. I'm here to deliver um, over 1,700 petitions. Um, 1,700 petitions demanding that the city of Brownsville, in conjunction with the district attorney's office, immediately drop the Class B misdemeanor charge against me because I was subjected to a politically motivated arrest. These petitions are also calling for an investigation into Mayor Mendez for abuse of power. So we're going to hand deliver these petitions to you. Should we hand them to your uh, secretary? I expect that you all read each and every petition. On the morning of Wednesday, February 16th, 2022, two cars of Brownsville police broke into my apartment. Without allowing me to properly dress and without providing a warrant, they arrested me, took away my prescription eyeglasses, subjected me to interrogation without a lawyer, and held me in jail for over 26 hours. All based on a single alleged charge of Class B misdemeanor graffiti. Immediately after my release, and apparently in conjunction, in coordination with city jail officials, the mayor of Brownsville, Trey Mendez, singled out and publicly attacked me by publishing a photo of me from the Brownsville Police Department in a post on his official Facebook page, setting me up for criticism and potential harm for his constituents. He also included the name of my employer in an attempt to harm my ability to make a living. Notably, Mayor Mendez has never treated anyone else in this way on his official Facebook page. Mayor Mendez made clear that he was lashing out since I am quoted in anti-SpaceX articles because of my community-engaged work speaking out against the destructive impact that SpaceX is causing in the Valley's environment and community and because of a small message that had been painted below the controversial BTX mural paid for by Elon Musk in downtown Brownsville to the effect of gentrified stop SpaceX. By the morning of February, Friday, February 18th, the graffiti at the bottom of the mural was covered up. After receiving backlash from the community, Mayor Trey Mendez has since edited his original post, but the damage is done. I have experienced significant trauma and harm as a result of his actions. The city of Brownsville should not allow reckless endangerment of its residents by its highest elected official. An immediate investigation should begin with consequences and repercussions due to Mayor Mendes' actions. Thank you. Hey, I blame my water pillars. You know, I always keep on it. My name is Standalone. And uh, Juan Benito Mancias is my colonized name. We were first colonized by the Spanish-speaking people, by the English-speaking people. We still have our language. Our language was recorded in 1886. The 170 years of Brownsville, 
Where's your history? You go anywhere, you find nothing but Elon Musk stuff. He's erasing your history. The history of this city, the history of this county, and you're allowing it. That's their, that's their technique of getting rid of culture, getting rid of values, getting rid of traditions and teachings. They are looting and they are pillaging the sites that are out there. And when somebody like Beca Hinojosa stands up to protect that what is there, they're not protesting. She's protesting the, she's protecting the rights of who we are. I am not a protester, I'm not an activist, I'm a protector of our land. And I'll continue to fight for those lands. And I'll continue to protect those lands because people like Beca Hinojosa are strong enough to stand up to, I want to say power, but it's giving you too much, too, too, too much credit. And the thing is that when you become them, when you become the colonizer, then you're just another plantation owner, or you're part of the, the house slaves of the plantation owner. The encomiendas, the encomenderos, the congreras that were here before. We were the first slaves here. And they're still treating us like slaves. We refuse to be intimidated by these tactics of militarization by someone who doesn't even understand or have any cultural values. Americans don't have values, they have ideals because they change every 10 years with your 10 year plans. And I think it's time that we recognize the fact that we are here and we're never gonna go anywhere. We've always been here. The thing is that you have to listen to us too. We have a marketing plan. Are you listening to our marketing plan? No, you, you, you just push us away. And that's racism in a way. That's tribal erasure. That's an ongoing genocide that is going on here. For 500 years, 500 years, 530 years ago, they came here together. Those people came here. And they took the resources from these lands and took them over, over there. 530 years now, they're still doing the same thing. They're contaminating the soil, the sacred site of our creation story, Boca Chica, is where our people were born. And there are birthing rites that took place at that place. These are fishing villages that are still exist there. And all of this stuff is being stolen and taken. Look up Porcion 38, 39, and 41. And you will see what it tells you there, that you can't build anything out there without our permission. And nobody's ever tried to talk to us, so you already go against NACPRA. You're already going against the American Indian Religious Freedom Act. The same acts that people are writing to protect who we are. And I don't need recognition from any of anybody, but I was gonna ask for a proclamation, but that's all right, I don't need it. I know who I am, and I don't know who my people are. Thank, Thank you, you. Mr. Macias. My name is Christopher Basaldu. I'm a Brownsville resident, I grew up here. And I'm also a member of the Carizo Come Crudo tribe and descended from the original people of this land who lived here since this land has existed. And we are the people of the land. As Brownsville celebrates its 170th year, imagine that your ancestors have lived in this land for 50,000 years as our people have. We were here before Brownsville. We were here before SpaceX. We were here before LNG terminals. And we were here before the United States. We were here before Texas. We were here before Elon Musk. And we were here before Trey Mendez. The city of Brownsville intimidated, harassed, abused, and intimidated a local community activist and organizer whose only wish is to have environmental justice in the Rio Grande Valley. She works alongside indigenous people people of color. She works alongside people who are poor and people who are deliberately silenced by the levers of power, including the city of Brownsville, including the powers, the colonial powers that would abuse poor and marginalized people. Mayor Mendez and the city of Brownsville and the police department are among those abusers and oppressors. Akeino Hosa was wrongfully arrested on an alleged charge, an alleged class B misdemeanor graffiti charge that to my knowledge has never been prosecuted in the history of Brownsville. So why 
would Brownsville PD and the district attorney start now? And then Tremendez bragged about it publicly on his public social, uh, social media accounts, trying to intimidate somebody who has the courage to stand up and speak for the environment, speak for a clean environment, a future where we live together in a clean area, not sacrificed to the poisons of liquid natural gas, natural gas, to pipelines, and to SpaceX, and the pollution that they're putting out there on the beautiful public beaches of Boca Chica and in wildlife refuges. Trey Mendes was sending a signal that anybody who stands up with courage to dissent against corporate extraction will be silenced and intimidated and harassed and abused by police. So I'm inviting the city of Brownsville to write a letter to Luis Sainz, the district attorney, and ask him politely to drop the charges against Becca Hinojosa. I also invite the city council to open an investigation on Trey Mendez for the abuse of power. And this is also Thank something you. that we're asking as the original indigenous people of this land that existed here before the city of Brownsville. Nenapalech, I am a Payasel.